So in this lesson today, we're going to talk about corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So um, when we talk about geometric figures uh, that are congruent, um, they are congruent if they are the same size and shape. So corresponding angles and corresponding sides are in the same position in polygons with an equal number of sides. So go ahead and write down corresponding angles and corresponding sides. Then it says two polygons are congruent polygons if and only if their corresponding sides and angles are congruent. So both the sides and the angles have to be congruent for the poly polygons to be congruent. And we're going to talk specifically triangles today. So thus triangles that are the same size and shape are congruent. So corresponding sides are sides that are congruent and in the same position in the two polygons. Okay, and we're going to talk about that some more in just a minute, but... Um, corresponding angles are angles that are congruent and occupy the same position at each intersection of a pair of congruent sides, okay? So, <clears throat> so properties of congruent polygons. So, um, we're going to talk through this diagram. So, notice that we have a triangle ABC and a triangle DEF, right? So, what we want to do is we want to find the angles, because we're going to talk about corresponding angles first, that have... Um, one arc on them. So notice that we have one arc here with A. There's one arc there and there's one arc there. So we can say angle A is congruent with angle D because both of them have one arc on them. Then we're going to talk about B, right? So B has two arcs and what else over there on that other triangle has two arcs? It's E, right? So we're going to say angle B, sorry, angle B is congruent with angle E. Okay, and then our last one is C. So here we have three arcs, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So we're going to say that angle C is congruent with angle F. Okay, now we're going to talk about corresponding sides. Now, when we talk about sides, when you guys are starting to name these, there's a couple ways we can do this, and I'm going to talk to you all about both of them. So <clears throat> first we're going to talk about AB, okay? So we're going to talk about the side AB right there. See AB? We're going from the angle with one arc to the angle with two arcs. So in the other triangle, we're going to go from uh, the angle with one arc to the angle with two arcs, right? You see that? So we're going to say AB is congruent with DE, okay? So those are segments, right? So those are the segments that are the sides, okay? Then... I want to also show you that these are the first two letters and the first two letters. Notice that? So they are in the same position in the statement about the triangles as well, okay? So the next one we're going to do is going to be um, BC. So let's just talk about BC now. So BC is two arcs to three arcs. So here we're going to go EF, two arcs to three arcs. You see that? So we're going to say the segment BC, which is the side, is congruent with EF. And here again, if we look at BC, they're the third, second and third letters, and EF is the second and third letters, okay? So now we're going to do our final one, and this is our third side, right? So we could go from A to C, or we could go from C to A. It doesn't matter which way we go, but we need to go the same direction in the other one. So <clears throat> I'm going to go AC here. So I went from one arc to three arcs. So that's my AC, so that means in the other triangle, I'm going to go from one arc to three arcs, so that's going to be DF. Okay, see that DF? Okay. So here again, this time we went from first to last, and from first to last. You see it? So when you are naming it, they got to be in the same order. Very, very, very important. So in our next one, we could draw it. We could draw PQR, P, Q, R, and... Uh, S, T, W. <clears throat> now we can do it that way, or we can just look at the order they are in the actual statement, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and go one arc, one arc, two arcs, two arcs, and three arcs here, and three arcs here. Now because I wrote them in the order they're in, I could say one tick, one tick, two ticks, two ticks, three ticks, three ticks. Now this could help me with writing my corresponding part statements, right? So we could say angle P is congruent with angle, first letter, first letter, angle S, right? Then we could keep going and we could say angle Q, angle Q up here is congruent with angle T. Again, middle letter, middle letter. Angle Q is congruent with 
angle T. And then our third letter, angle R. And again, if we look at three, three ticks here, three ticks here, right? Or three arcs, sorry. Um, angle R is congruent with angle W. Okay, so now when we talk about our sides, and I'm going to show you another way to do this too. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about our sides. So those were our angles. So now we're going to talk about our sides. So we got P, whoop, didn't mean to do that. That was my one arc. That was my two arcs. That was Q up there. Okay, so <clears throat> um, this is PQ. There's PQ. This is ST. There's ST. Doesn't matter which way you do it. You could do the first two letters. So we could say PQ is congruent with what? ST. Yep. Okay. Now we could go QR, TW. Again, two, these two letters and those two letters. So we could say QR is congruent with TW. And then our final one, again, doesn't matter whether we go from R to P or P to R. So let's just time go from R to P. So that means we're going from last to first, right? So we're going to say RP is congruent with, again, last to first, right? So we're going three arcs to one arc. Got it? So that's going to be WS. Okay? All right, do the U try one and then come back to me when you're done. So this time I'm going to do it without drawing the triangles, okay? So I notice I got angle E with angle P. So angle P E is congruent with angle P because I'm just going to use the statement. Then we've got angle F and angle, yeah, change colors thing, angle F and angle Q because those are in the middle. Angle F is congruent with angle Q. And then we're going to do angle G and angle R, third letter to third letter. So angle G is congruent to angle R, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about first and last, first, uh, first two, second two, that kind of thing, okay? So here we're gonna go <clears throat> EF. So side EF is gonna be congruent with our first two letters of the other one because we just did the first two letters. So this can be PQ. Okay, then we're going to do our next one is going to be FG and QR. FG is congruent with QR. Okay, and then we're going to do first last. Um, so we're going to go EG is congruent with what? PR. So again, just think of the position they are in the statement. That's going to allow you to write your your uh, corresponding congruent part statements, okay? All right, so for example two, it says, given that triangle ABC is congruent with DBC, find the measure of DBC. So this tells us that um, angle A is congruent with angle D, right? So we could say angle A is congruent with angle D. And we know by the way, that this is also a right angle, right? So can't we use that to solve for our X? So, um, but we also know that this over here is 49.3 because those two angles are congruent, right? So do we even need to solve for the X for this one? Not necessarily, um, but we could. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you both, okay? So then it's asking us for the angle DBC. So it's asking us to find angle DBC. So that means we're finding that middle letter right there, right? So it's the point in the angle. So this is what we're actually looking for, okay? So when we do 90 plus 49.3, add those together, that's going to be 139.3 and subtract that from 180. That's one way to do it, right? And that would give us um, x or sorry, DBC. So that's going to be minus 139.3. So that's going to give us 40.7, okay? And that's the measure of angle DBC, okay? Then um, I'm also going to solve for X, okay? Didn't ask me to solve for X, but I'm going to solve for X. Now, now how am I going to do that? Because it's going to apply to y'all's homework, okay? So this is a 90 degree angle. So isn't that going to be 90 is equal to 2x minus 16. We're going to add 16 to both sides. So that's going to give us 106 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. So that's going to be x is equal to 53. Okay? 
So here's our last problem. So it says that A is congruent to D again. So A is congruent to D. That We could tell that by looking at the drawing, can't we? And B is congruent with E. So this angle B up here is congruent with E. So that means this is 53 degrees because the one, because B is 53 degrees, right? So now can't we find F? We could find F, right? These two angles, C and F, are, the, are congruent, right? So can we go, remember, if we've used 90, we have 90 left. So we could say 90 minus 53. And pretty sure that is equal to 37 degrees, right? So the measure of angle F, that's equal to the measure of angle F, okay? And then we're also going to compare these sides. So I'm looking at AB, okay? So this is side AB right here, AB. Well, let me do this in red. AB is over here and AB is up there. So what does it map to? DE, right? So there's DE. AB to DE. So that means we can set this equal to the 6, right? So we're going to say um, AB is equal to DE. So 2X minus 2 is equal to 6. Add 2 to both sides. 2X equals what? Uh, 8, right? Add 2 to both sides. So And then divide both sides by 2. So X is equal to 4. Oh, and then I had one more side that it asked us for. It asked us for BC. Well, again, look up here, BC is congruent with EF, right? So what was EF right here? It was 10, right? So isn't that going to be 10? So BC is equal to EF. So that means BC is equal to 10 because EF is equal to 10.